like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars kingdom secrets that can turn anyone for that matter to become a giant in the spirit number one the power of a systemic prayer life please write it down the power of a systemic prayer life please underline the word systemic many people teach on prayer many people pray many people talk about prayer but many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry largely because their prayer life is not systemic in acts chapter 3 and verse 1 we're considering the power of a systemic prayer life acts chapter 3 and verse 1 let's read together ready one to read now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer somebody said the hour of prayer the hour of prayer there was a time dedicated it became a ritual it became habitual they even named it the hour of prayer you see the power of prayer is not just in the activity alone but the consistency the consistency of that fellowship now i've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer let me quickly do a recap for you there are four four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture number one prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation fellowship and transformation i think that is luke 29 did i get that right and verse 9 or thereabout the bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering so prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you christ-like in experience he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you so that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation number two prayer is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the bible says that should be matthew chapter 11 i believe and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer mark is it mark help me mark mark eleven twenty four. he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did i get that right Be believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them hallelujah Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to God so prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests number three prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation god is not the only person you talk to when you pray in prayer you can talk to things in prayer you can talk to spirits you are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life are we together even god who call it the things that be not as though they were you can create spiritual possibilities you can make decrees it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one who made the decree thou shalt decree a thing your bible says where the word of a king is 
there is power so prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities program possibilities in your life finally prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession warfare establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life these are among others I believe the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer but you see your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of jesus we find his prayer life the bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities you need to picture the life of jesus everybody thronging upon him moving from city to city and he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon but early in the morning it was a habit the apostles also started learning it the bible says simon and they that were with him followed after him jesus was not just prayerful he was systemic with his prayer look up please many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer we largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you then you may now give some attention are we together Believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies. Believers were never designed to pray only during needs. Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, it says to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the higher institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the phase of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be schoolwork and then you have the luxury of time. And it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman 
you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful would not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people you would want to maximize your night times you want to maximize your mornings in principle I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons because it affords you a greater sense of focus are we together now there are moments where you can take dedicated times out maybe a whole day but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth I'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the holy spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification i'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you have bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of god and then all of these things that i mentioned will no longer be found in your life is someone learning you want to gain mastery in training any believer you have to train them to understand the power of a systemic or systematized prayer life there are people who come to pray and you know they say a lot of childish things plus Jesus minus Satan and that's the end of it that's the prayer or they say what we know to be the Lord's prayer as a pastor of a ministry that's your entire prayer life no you can't walk that way are we together no wonder the life that should emanate as we speak as we preach and as we lead is not there and you find out that there's a lot of energy that is being dissipated but the life component that is ignited through a rich prayer life is not there for instance you can hear a preacher preach preach sincerely and what he's saying is not a lie except that your spirit bears witness that there is information but there is no life and life there does not mean flying up and down there is there is the strength let me tell you a healthy secret place cannot be hidden no it's not about the huskiness of your voice it's not about auditory there is a signature of life that is upon your speakings you cannot pretend a healthy prayer life no you cannot act and pretend a healthy prayer life believers hear me zaria hear me if you do not understand the power of prayer you will give evil the right and the credence to reign over territories when men do not know how to pray and subdue territorial powers we are talking of advanced levels of prayer where it's not just needs you are standing like a watchman over a territory and insisting allowing the things that must happen within a territory or disallowing it 
by the authority that you have are we together yes sir there are controlling spirits across territories that manipulate the thinking of people causing them to act in certain ways that are antichrist it is the responsibility of the believer within that territory did the bible not say in matthew chapter 5 jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16 he says you are the light you are the light of zaria believers hear me he says you are the salt of the earth the, the assignment of the salt is twofold one to add taste or value number two to preserve you are not salt if you are not contributing towards your prayer life in the name of Jesus we stand here as salt darkness will not reign over Zaria it's not just when you gather as a prayer group it's not just when you gather here in Koinonia it must become a lifestyle to make your contribution as far as sanitizing the territory to make the purposes of God find a free course it says I Paul desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us if Satan can hinder men, he can hinder things. Things like many manifestations of favor coming to you can be hindered. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that my environment will always remain an environment of pro-advancement. An environment that makes it conducive for the purposes of God to find expression. Believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, you must have a systematized prayer life. As a father over your family, you must have a systematized prayer life. You see, our parents used to practice something called morning devotion. I know that that may not really be enough to give you a robust spiritual life, but it was better than nothing. Even though it was just five, ten minutes of just sharing briefly, it was consistent and many of us the bank of spiritual knowledge that we have came from that experience you would find out that they just spent 10 minutes in a day in truth i would tell you you will need more than that if you want to attain stature in the spirit but it is still better than nothing and don't forget that they were working with the limit of the knowledge they had so god would vet them based on the knowledge available for them they made the most they made sure that every month they bought you devotional remember or every year there were others that were yearly there were others that were monthly they insisted whether you liked it or not and remember sometimes you will not do it for two weeks then you will repent like i used to do and then cover all the ones that you didn't do then backslide again hmm. but now you must get to a point where you have the prayer ministry as a revelation listen prayer is not all about power prayer is about negotiating with the realm of the spirit to manifest possibilities it's not just all about anointing uh -uh. Are we together do not allow the devil to destroy your loved ones under your watch do not allow the devil to to invade a territory under your watch do not allow yourself to be bankrupt listen in the name of Jesus may it never happen that the time will come in Zaria where there is no longer evangelism people are not being saved people are not being healed people are not being delivered that the churches are now facing all kinds of pain persecution no increase in membership may it never happen under our watch in the name of Jesus it is our responsibility to stand and to pray it says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore hallelujah to pray we are preparing for a UK conference right now and there is prayer happening every day every day non-stop until the conference time because taking a flight and going there is not what you need God is sending you as an agent of revival there are age-long spirits that predated even your arrival you're not just going to stand there and speak English no the Bible says every time you see men there are two laws working in them number one is the law of sin and death and the assignment is to work in partnership that there is a superimposition the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus it would take more than good English it would take more than a good sermon it says I when I came to to you i didn't come with the excellency of speech 
you want to see nations submit to the power of God you want to see the manifestation of the power of God sweep nations we are not just talking about having a car and a house and personal needs we are talking of a time where by reason of your alignment God can trust you with the destinies of a generation hallelujah the Bible shows us three levels of trust in the Bible the least level of trust that God can accord a man is to trust you with things giving you things is the least level of trust in the spirit things like money things like access to things is the least level of trust the second level of trust is trust over destinies God can give you the trust and make you a custodian he can trust you with destinies men nations the highest level of trust as revealed from scripture that God can accord a man is to trust you with his program literally he puts you to spearhead his agenda that God will say for the next 10 years this is what I want to do in Zaria and I'm putting you in charge of that program I hope someone is learning so celebrating that you have access to things is wonderful but I'm telling you that does not weigh much in the spirit oh I have money I have a good job thank God for that but spiritually speaking mm -mm. you find this in Matthew chapter 25 and there are other synoptic accounts we are not going there for the sake of time you find a situation where the first thing he gave them was things talents when they were faithful he now made them head over nations that was the reward they got are we together yes so Jesus looks at his disciples and says I'm sending you as witnesses over Jerusalem Judea but among all of them there were a few people who were trusted with his program salvation to the Gentiles was given to one man salvation to it was not given to a group in as much as all of them were sent as witnesses when you mention Paul when you mention John when you mention Peter these were men who were trusted with programs not just things Jesus said I have many things to tell you but he cannot bear them now the many things he wanted to say was what Paul now brought if Paul was not there we would not have an opportunity to hear the many other things Jesus wanted to say do you know what it means to read the Bible without Paul's contribution number one you will not understand redemption reading the gospels it will take the pauline epistles to bring perspective because as at the time jesus was dying they had not received the holy spirit in them so their spiritual understanding was still there it was paul by the spirit that began to give a sound exegesis of everything that happened the whole book of ephesians six chapters it was paul that began to tell us that we were raised up with christ not even jesus preached it remember what I taught you three levels of trust things destinies God's program and in every territory God has a program that's why people come to territories and leave every please listen this is a very prophetic message there is something God is doing in Zaria now that he did not do 10 years ago but that that program can be aborted until he finds men that move beyond the realm of being trusted with things to be trusted with destinies and to be trusted with his program every believer who grows holistically you will see these three phases of trust you will start seeing certain manifestations things are working a car is coming this and that and sometimes we get distracted and we feel that's the highest level no there are higher levels of ranking and authority in the spirit where God now trusts you with certain destinies and say under your watch this family must not die under your watch this must not die then a time comes when he measures a thousand cubits and he can trust you with his program now he can send you to regions and reveal to you what he wants to do here I am in your presence do it's to me what you want. want I'm open before you Lord 
do to me what you want. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, my assignment is to continue to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you see that there are vast dimensions as far as the work of the believer is concerned. That Christianity is not just limited to having things and enjoying things and saying, no, oh, this is working for me. There are superior needs that even God has. The need to see the world evangelization. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. And you do not have to be a pastor. I have told you, prophetically speaking, God's end time program is separated into three groups there are prophetic intercessors then there are those who are sent into the cosmos then there are the kingdom financiers this is the tripartite formation of the end time army and every one of us here will play one two or all of these roles i repeat again prophetic intercessors these are people like anna the prophetess you may never see them out but they are the ones who pray the program of god to come listen carefully and then number two we now have those who are sent into Abarakata. i just sense a strong anointing very strong anointing as i just began to talk about this very strong anointing those who are sent that includes pastors apostles those who go that includes entrepreneurs please do listen to my message redefining revival i have said that the revival that is coming is not about the pulpit alone because when you read the bible it was not only elijah that walked there was daniel there was deborah and all these mantles who find expression in this army so it's important if you are esther don't go and take elijah's training it will corrupt what you will become you must know, you must find your parallel in scripture and then follow the training that leads you. If you are Esther and you do Elijah's training, you will abort your mission in the palace. And if you are Elijah and you now do the training of say Gideon, no, you identify the kind of training by the similitude of the mantle that is following you. So if you are Esther, start looking for Haggai and Mordecai these are the two people that can make you become the Esther that marries Ahasuerus if you are Elisha make sure you do not make a mistake of looking for Haggai he cannot train Elijah he can only train Esther the challenge is that many of us are going through different patterns of training that does not suit what we are to become so prophetic intercessors that was a digression those who are sent into the mission field and then kingdom financiers the josephs of arimatheas the body of jesus is hanging upon the tree and no every the prayer warriors ministry anna the prophetess had finished the ministry of the disciples and the women had finished it was only the ministry of the kingdom financier who had influence and had a virgin tomb joseph had influence with the government of the day and he had a virgin tomb if jesus were not buried in the tomb we would never be able to say oh grave where is your sting and oh oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory he had to be buried in the tomb if we have only prophetic intercessors the program of god cannot happen fully if we have only people going to the mission field this was the mistake that missionaries did when they came into Nigeria. Most of them did not have proper prophetic. There was no rich bank of prayer and intercession. And they just came with sincere evangelical zeal. And some of them, as soon as they, they landed certain lands, they did, were not even given an opportunity to preach. They slaughtered them and they destroyed them. Because before their arrival, by divination the powers that be had seen their coming and because they did not have capacity they brought a sincere gospel but they neglected the formation even jesus before his arrival prayer had to go before him learn this pattern you can use it for this is true even for any church the ministry of prayer the ministry of doctrine the word and administration and leadership 
then the ministry of kingdom financing every time this tripart this tripartite pattern is compromised there will be problem in that organization there will be problem in that ministry so if you have people who only pray in a ministry they will never grow because the ministry of doctrine that matures believers is not there you see that now and then if you have a ministry that does not have support systems errands and horse that hold the hand of the man of god they cannot hold the rod but they can hold the hand of the one holding the rod is someone learning so my first admonishment in training you is that you must develop a systematized prayer life it is it is your assignment under God to study different models in scripture different models through modern history there are prayer giants who have joined the cloud of witnesses men like EW Kenyon EM bounds you can study their their, their approach to prayer and then there are those that God has granted privilege we who are now alive and are making a contribution you can study the Bible says to follow them there are always them who through faith and patience have obtained the disciples said we are not just following Jesus for his crusade we want to follow him to that secret place and see what really happens that produces the miracles at the crusade ground the secret of great men is in what they do before the manifestations not the manifestations 